Welcome to lecture 3 of the Research Methods and Ethics in Science course. The topic for this lecture is formulating a research problem. The research problem. The identification and analysis of a research problem is the first and most crucial step of the research process. Any question that you want answered in any assumption or assertion that you want to challenge or investigate can become a research problem or a research topic for your study. Nevertheless, not all questions can be transformed into research problems and some may prove to be extremely difficult to study. In formulating a research problem, it requires considerable knowledge of both the subject area and research methodology. It therefore means that a research problem can be derived from a question that you may want to answer or an assumption or assertion that you want to challenge or investigate. However, it is not every question that can be turned or transformed into a research problem because some of the questions that you may ask or assumptions that you want to investigate may not work as research questions. The importance of formulating a research problem. The formulation of a research problem is the first and most important step of the research process. It helps develop different forms of the research problem from the very simple to the very complex. That is, the way a problem is formulated determines almost every step that follows. The type of study design that can be used, the type of sampling strategy that can be employed, the research instrument that can be used or developed, and the type of analysis that can be undertaken. The formulation of a problem acts as the input to a study, which eventually affects the output. Sources of research problems. Most research revolves around four P's. That's people, problems, programs, and phenomena. What this means is that research problems can emanate from people, that is a group of people in a community may have peculiar problems which may, may arouse a researcher's interest in that the researcher may be interested in solving the problems that exist in that community. Similarly, a researcher may find or identify problems in a program or programs and programs are normally interventions that uh, may be applied to community and organization, etc., or even government or any business institution. Problems may also emanate from phenomena where things are not supposed to work in a particular way, but they are working in that way. So a researcher may be interested in finding out why the problem exists in that phenomenon or phenomena. Most research studies have two aspects. The people who provide a study population and the other aspect, the other three P's that finish the subject areas. This table shows a breakdown of the two aspects of most research studies, especially in the social sciences. So we have the study population, which is one aspect of the study. And then the other aspect is the subject area, which comprises of 
a problem, a program, and a phenomenon. The study population consists of people or human beings. So, one aspect deals with the study of individuals, groups, organizations, and communities, whilst the other aspect deals with the study of problem, which is issues, situations, associations, need, population, compositions, and profiles. And in the study of program, we can study content, structure, attributes, outcomes, satisfaction, consumers, providers, etc. Now, in studying phenomena, we study cause and effects, relationships, and the study of the phenomenon itself. Now, at the end of the day, the people provide you with the required information, right? So it's, it's about collecting data from people, information from people, and it requires that the people would provide the information to you. Now, in studying the other aspects, outside the population, we are looking at information that you need to collect to find answers to service your research questions. For instance, if someone wants to conduct a research on the effect of COVID-19 on marital relationships, we can break this research study into two aspects. We can look at the study population, which would be married people, that forms the study population. And then we can look at the other aspects, which is the phenomenon of the COVID-19. So we can look at problems that may emanate from the COVID-19, which would be issues, situations, associations, etc. Right? Um, and the phenomenon, which is the COVID-19, we look at cause and effects, and then the study of the phenomenon itself. So we can clearly see that that research study clearly has two different aspects. So the people on one side, and then on the other side, the problem, and then the phenomenon. When selecting a research problem or topic, there are a number of considerations to keep in mind which will help to ensure that your study will be manageable and that you remain motivated. These considerations are 1. Interest Interest should be the most important consideration in selecting a research problem. A research endeavor is usually time-consuming and involves hard work and possibly unforeseen problems. If you select a topic which does not uh, sorry, greatly interest you, it could become extremely difficult to sustain the required motivation and put in enough time and energy to complete it. What it means is that interest generates motivation. So in selecting a research research topic, you should select a topic that you would internally be motivated to do and where there are challenges because you are, you are so much motivated, you would not easily give up. So it is mostly appropriate to do research in your interest area or your area of specialization so that you would have the needed expertise and the motivation to complete the research project. Two, magnitude. You should have sufficient knowledge about the research process to be able to visualize the work involved in completing the proposed study. 
narrow the topic down to something manageable, specific and clear. It is extremely important to select a topic that you can manage within the time and with the resources at your disposal. Three, measurement of concepts. If you are using a concept in your study, that is in quantitative studies, make sure you are clear about its indicators and their measurement. Do not use concepts in your research problem that you are not sure how to measure. This does not mean you cannot develop a measurement procedure as the study progresses. While most of the developmental work will be done during your study, it is imperative that you are reasonably clear about the measurement of these concepts at this stage. What this point means is that if you are doing a quantitative study, for instance, which is dependent on an existing theory or model, you must understand all the variables that are in that model or theory and be sure that you will be able to measure these variables. You must be certain about the measurement skills, etc., that are used to measure these variables so that you would not assume that you can measure it when in actual fact you will not be able to easily measure these variables. Four, level of expertise. Make sure you have an adequate level of expertise for the task you are proposing. Allow for the fact that you will learn during the study and may receive help from your research supervisor and others. But remember that you need to do most of the work yourself. Five, relevance. Select a topic that is of relevance to you as a professional. Ensure that your study adds to the existing body of knowledge, bridges current gaps, or is useful in policy formulation. This will help you to sustain interest in the study. It is critical that you do not replicate already existing work that has been done, in that your your research study should add to the existing body of knowledge and you must justify the reason why you want to conduct that study because if you are doing conducting a study that has already been done by somebody it does not add to the existing body of knowledge six availability of data if your topic entails collection of information from secondary sources that is office records client records census or other already published reports, etc. Make sure that this data is available and in the format you want before finalizing your topic. Seven, ethical issues. Another important consideration in formulating a research problem is the ethical issues involved. In the course of conducting a research study, the study population may be adversely affected by some of the questions that is directly or indirectly. Deprived of an intervention, expected to share sensitive and private information or expected to be simply experimental. How ethical issues can affect the study population and how ethical problems can be overcome should be thoroughly examined in the problem formulation stage. We discussed ethical issues in the previous uh, lecture and we we delve into the ethical issues in that the researcher must understand the ethical issues involved in conducting the research and should not infringe for instance on and uh, on the respondents rights and must consider uh, an anonymity confidentiality etc so these ethical issues must be taken seriously by the researcher. Steps in formulating a research problem. The formulation of a research problem is the most critical part of the research journey as the quality and relevance of your research project entirely depends on it. 
The process of formulating a research problem consists of a number of steps. Working through these steps presupposes a reasonable level of knowledge in the broad subject area within which the study is to be undertaken and the research methodology itself. A brief review of the relevant literature helps enormously in broadening this knowledge base. Without such knowledge, it is difficult to dissect a subject area clearly and adequately. Going back to the example of the COVID-19 um, scenario that was cited earlier, you would agree with me that without adequate knowledge of the COVID-19 pandemic or the virus itself and the way it affects the human population is very important in conducting a research in that area. So it means that if you want to conduct that research and want to find out its impact on marital relationships, you must do a little literature review on, on the phenomenon. Likewise, the relationships that exist in a marriage so that you will have a fair idea of the two issues and how they, 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 they may relate. You should also have a fair idea of the methodology you would have to adopt in order to successfully conduct that study. And a literature review would help you to get that information about the phenomena as well as the methodology involved in the study. Steps involved in formulating a research problem. One, identify a broad field or subject area of interest to you. Dissect the broad area into sub areas. Three, select what is of most interest to you. Raise research questions, formulate objectives, assess your objectives, and then seven, double check. The formulation of research objectives. Objectives are the goals you set out to attain in your study. Objectives inform a reader what a researcher wants to achieve through the study, and it it's extremely important to word them clearly and specifically. Objectives should be listed under two headings, main objectives and sub-objectives. Main objectives. One, the main objective is an overall statement of the thrust of your study. Two, it is also a statement of the main associations and relationships that you seek to discover or establish. Sub-objectives. One, the sub-objectives are the specific aspects of the study topic that you want to investigate within the main framework of your study. Two, sub-objectives should contain only one aspect of the study. What this means is that the sub-objectives should be very specific and not too broad. The main objectives will be broad and cover the entire research study, whilst the sub-objectives are very specific statements and they cannot normally be broken down into other or um, minor objectives. The objective should start with, with words such as to determine, to find out, to ascertain, to measure, and to explore. Objectives should be expressed in such a way that the wording clearly, completely, and specifically communicates to your readers your intention.
Establishing operational definitions. In defining the problem, you may use certain words or items that are difficult to measure and or the understanding of, of which may vary from respondent to respondent. In a research study, it is important to develop, define or establish a set of rules, indicators or yardsticks in order to establish clearly the meaning of such words or items. It is sometimes also important to define clearly the study population from which you need to obtain the required information. When you define concepts that you plan to use either in your research problem and or in identifying the study population in a measurable form, they are called working definitions or operational definitions. So in order to avoid ambiguity, when people read your research report or your research proposal, you must identify certain critical technology or technologies, concepts, etc. Et that you must clearly define so that your reader would not misinterpret that particular concept or technology and, and, and it should be clearly defined so that it will prevent misinterpretation or ambiguity. Practical class, how to formulate a research problem. In the following sections, we would try to make the process of formulating a research problem a, a little bit more practical by looking at a practical example of formulating a research problem. Steps in formulating a problem. One, identify a broad field or subject area of interest to you. So let's assume that we are interested in this broad subject area, salt. Dissect the broad area into sub areas. So we have salt. We can break this broad area into the mining of salt marketing of salt, production of salt, and the uses of salt. Among these sub areas, you must select what is of most interest to you. So let's assume the production of salt is what is of interest to you. So under the production of salt, we could raise several research questions. Number one, what salt type is needed by the petroleum industry in Ghana? Two, can quality sodium sulfate be produced for Ghana soap industry? Three, does the paint industry have enough salt? Sorry, enough sodium? After raising the research questions, the next thing is to formulate the main and the sub objectives. So for this example, our main objective could be looking at producing cheap but quality sodium for the paint industry. And the sub-objectives will be one, to ascertain the influence of evaporation on sodium. And two, specific gravity when sodium crystallizes. It is not compulsory that because you have identified a research problem 
and its associated objectives, you must continue the research study at all costs. It is important that you take into consideration certain critical issues, and these will inform you as to whether you, should, you would be able to complete the project or not. And these are, you need to look at the work involved in the entire project, the, how, the magnitude of the work involved. You need to look at the available time you have for the project because you will have timelines to work with. Three, the financial resources at your disposal. If you do not have the funds to carry out the project, you will not be able to execute. And four, you must also look at, number one, your technical abilities or ability to execute the research study and also your research supervisor's interest and capabilities, that is technical capabilities to execute the study. So you must weigh all these things before you conclude that you are going to proceed with the research project. So you need to double check, double check that you are really interested in the area of research, that you agree with the objectives, that you have the adequate resources, that you have the technical expertise to handle the subject matter.